BBTV がお届けいたします。So, if you guys remember, Eliza Blue was saying that she was helping Tate's victims on her episode of Timcast, and it turns out that that might have too been a lie. So, Ashton, can you explain the screenshots and, and like the whole background of like how you directed the victims to her and all that? I'm gonna just basically go back in time, like about a year ago when I was first talking about the whole Andrew Tate stuff, kind of talking about how sketchy he was and just how that kind of put me off. And I remember the first time I really like went to Eliza to talk about this was when I first said it on Christie's show with Lauren. And I just remember the public completely dragging me for bringing this up, talking about Andrew Tate and talking about the investigation. I think Lauren was the one who made the comments about the human trafficking. And I just remember. Her and I just getting completely wiped out on the internet, no one believing us, yada, yada, yada. And Eliza Blue, I reached out to her trying to get advice like, hey, like, what do I do with this kind of situation? At this point, there was an investigation going on, you know, and, and people still were sort of denying that Andrew Tate was guilty of anything.、And、I was kind of talking to Eliza Blue about it, like, you know, like, this is really frustrating to me because this guy, you know, he's really sketchy, he's doing some sketchy stuff, like, he's. Being investigated and, and no one really seems to want to talk about it. And, you know, her and I were kind of talking about it, and she was.、Um, you and the, being, the. One of the accusers slash victims? Depending well, on no.、Uh, Eliza actually. With Eliza? She, she was. No, no. Eliza was talking. I was talking with Eliza about it because I wanted to get her opinion on the whole situation. And she wasn't talking、okay. about it publicly at all. like But she was talking about it with me privately as like some, some sense of a moral support, but she wasn't talking about it publicly. And which I found really surprising. Like, I would think someone like Andrew Tate, like, you know, being in the news cycle, you know, she would be talking about this kind of thing and sharing articles and stuff. And I was sending her like articles that were in、uh, Romanian、uh, news media. And she, you know, she hadn't shared anything, but I was sharing with her thinking she might have an interest in what was going on. And she has never shared it. And it wasn't、mm-hmm. until Tate was arrested she started talking about all of the Andrew Tate stuff, which I thought. Was pretty interesting that she waited until Andrew Tate was arrested, but maybe it's because, you know, there's just there's a certain PR move to that, I guess. And you, you want to kind of like make sure everything's represented properly. I, I, I tried not thinking about it too much because, again, Eliza Blue had built up this credibility for so many years and everyone trusts her because she's, you know, this human trafficking. Yeah, she, she, her connections too、here. with. With、right. like the people that promoted her, it's like, oh, you work with Elon, you work with all these people, you've been on all these podcasts. So it sort of builds a shield around them. Right. And so I didn't think about it. And one day she messaged me, she's like, hey, like, do you mind talking to my sheriff friend? And I was like, sure, absolutely.、Um, I'm talking to a few girls who reached out to me because they saw some of my tweets and they、um, claimed that they not only met Andrew Tate, but some of them actually were. Hurt by Andrew Tate,、um, were abused by him. In what him. kind of way? Think,、um, I'm going to try not to go into too many details just for the sake of like, the women talking to me, but some women told me that they were physically abused, sexually abused. One girl、okay. said that she witnessed him like, keeping girls in his house and not letting them leave, things like that. So、and、the one you were talking to that you were talking to. This one was physically abused and sexually abused by Andrew、okay. Tate. She wasn't trafficked.、Um, okay. So, just to clarify that,、um, but I was like, hey, so I, I know a few people who not only they've met Andrew, but they've witnessed some stuff or experienced some things. Do you think you could, you know, talk to them? And Eliza Blue said, sure, why not? And so I said, well, this is one girl. This is her name.、Um, here is her Twitter handle. You can contact her here. But、uh, she's not comfortable talking via social media because everything going on, a lot of, you know, a lot of people don't want to talk about their experience right now, especially if there's a lot of people who support Tate. So basically, what happened was I told her, hey, could you maybe reach out to her and talk to her? Could I get your phone number? Because she's not comfortable talking via social media. And Eliza said, no, sorry, I'm not going to give up my phone number, which is. Understandable, but she said, I here's a link that people can go to in case of an emergency if they're in an abusive situation. The problem was is that the link that she sent out that Friday, one, I thought she was gonna, you know, send it directly into the DMs of these young women that I got her in contact with, but instead, she has put it out for like everyone on her page. 
And it wasn't like her personal link. It was like a link to a basic human trafficking outsource page that anyone could have shared. And so I just thought that was That's a bit weird. interesting, but I didn't think about it. I assumed, okay, well maybe she's just going to contact them herself because I gave them, uh, I gave her their Twitter information. And then I found out that she went on Tim Pool and was talking about helping these Andrew Tate victims. And I said, great, maybe she got in contact with them. But as time went by with everything going on, I thought I would just reach out to her and say, hey, um, just want to ask, like, did you ever get, you know, in touch with the girls? And Eliza Blue just never answered me. Okay. So Eliza and first reached out to me saying, hey, here's a card for my sheriff friend. Do you mind calling her? And I was like, sure. I'll give her a call. And I did, but there was no answer on the, like, I never got a call back from her sheriff friend. When I called her, it rang twice and then nothing happened after that. So I don't know if that was a technical issue or if the number just isn't working or what. Um, and then she said, okay, I'll expect you to call. I said, Hey, Eliza, I'm going to send a girl your way who personally met Andrew Tate. And then Eliza asked me if she's a survivor or they met. And I said, both, um, and then the next uh, screenshot, I basically say, like, can she get your number? And then instead, Eliza refers me to this link for human trafficking victims. Um, but again, you know, I, I was just And that's the like, link right there. Yeah, it's the National Human Trafficking Hotline. Not her own thing. It's like, right, if, if, you know, if she was a human trafficking advocate who's working on these safe houses and whatnot, wouldn't she be able to talk to these victims herself because she's going yeah. to Tim Pool and she claims she's to help like them. 60 people as well. Like right. that's not even really possible if you're one person to take on like 60 cases. That'd be very difficult because Fair and Balance reached out to other organizations who do similar things and helping trafficking victims and they take on like 20 cases. So that was honestly a huge red flag. So it says I'll make sure that everyone gets the contact link on Friday. What does that mean when she's saying that? Right, but that's that's the National Human Trafficking Hotline. And then I, I assumed it was like her personal contact link. But again, when I asked these girls if they had heard from Eliza, you know, they never anyone they never could spoke do with her. Too. Like anyone right. could just link you that. But that's what I'm saying is to be a human trafficking survivor advocate, like it's it's not just sharing stories and sharing articles and sharing links. Like if if you're gonna be a human trafficking, you know, survivor advocate. I want to know exactly what kind of work you're doing. I want to know what you're doing on the ground, what you're doing to help build safe houses, help to get certain uh, legislation passed, you, just something to actually help survivors of human trafficking. If you're just on Twitter sharing links and articles, that's no different than well, just having any other Twitter account that anyone could do. Right. And, and, this, and that's fair completely. And that's why she's getting so much crap is because there's a lack of legitimacy to what she does and credentials. But in this screenshot, so this is you talking to the girl that says she was physically touched mm -hmm. without her consent by Andrew Tate. I gave Eliza this girl's information and I told this girl, I trust Eliza. You know, I'm not, I even told the girl, like I'm not the person to come to. Like I'm not, I don't, I don't have the resources or connections. I'm just someone tweeting about this. Um, right. But here's someone who actually can help you. And this girl's like, oh, okay, you know, I trust you to give this woman your information my information because you know if you say she has the resources and she's has a huge credibility in this then i trust you and i feel bad now because i don't really know what the credibility is anymore i mean i i want to have the benefit of the doubt that eliza's eliza at some point in her life was hurt and something bad you know I, I i want to believe she's not lying but if you're gonna tell me you're gonna reach out to these survivors and you're gonna help these women because I don't have the resources to do that. Um, I kind of hope that you are actually going to do something to help these women, if, if that's what your whole platform's about. Yeah, that's what everyone was hoping for, but the benefit of the doubt has fallen through completely, even with uh, Candace someone speaking out and Tim Pool now finally saying, okay, you guys win, like, you guys are right, she is out of control. Really quick, I want to go over this screenshot. So this yeah. is you asking the girl, did Eliza ever reach out to you? And this is yeah. the same girl that on Tim Cast, Eliza Blue said that she was helping these victims, like the Tate well, victims. I don't know. That's what she said, Here's right? Thing. I don't know who Eliza Blue is helping. And that's the thing. So if she is not 
reaching out to the people I try getting her in contact with, you know, and I don't need names. I don't need to know exactly who she's helping. I just want to know why is it Eliza is talking about being a human trafficking advocate, but here I'm giving her contacts to people who have been hurt, have stories to tell, and then she's not even reaching out to them. That's the part I don't understand. I met Eliza Blue um, because I, I actually, it was when I was uh, at TimCast, I was doing editing, I was editing videos for Luke and a little bit for Tim at the time. And she went over there for her first interview. And um, were you we were there out. during that video that was posted of her like giving footsie jobs and like humping every leg inside what? after episode? You didn't see that video? Oh, that's yeah. why Adam had long hair still. Oh my gosh, yeah. Yes, yeah, so that's her on the couch, <gasps> right? That is when cuddling she was there. With, cuddling up with Ian. Yeah, no, because Adam was still living at the compound then. And yeah, no, she was, yeah, she was. And then she's putting her foot on his crotch. Yeah, I remember the next day, like someone making a joke about Eliza trying to get it with Ian or something. But I think Ian was talking to someone so i wasn't quite sure about it but yeah that's that, that has to be like 2020 2021 because adam still had long hair yeah so i believe that was her first her first one so it had to be the same one that you're talking about right mm -hmm. yeah it has to be it has to be wow well she only was on tim pool like what once or twice it was the first time when i met her and the second time was recently when she went on about the tate stuff so yeah, no, me and her, I met her when doing like video work and stuff for Luke. It was weird though. It was, it was, it was she, not, not in a bad way. She was just really nice, but I just, I'd never seen someone stay the night at the compound unless it was I like. I think we know why. Well, I yeah. think we have an idea why it wasn't covered I, for so long too after that video. But like, I just remember the day after Tim was really annoyed. He's like, why is she still here? Like, what's going on? Why, like, what do you mean you changed your flight? So when you book with TimCast, everyone gets flown in. Like Tim, you know, the company, I guess Tim's company pays for the flight. And Tim was confused because at the time, uh, shoot, Tiffany was still booking stuff for Tim and whatnot. And Tiffany was requested by Eliza to change her flight for a different day. And Tim was in the car because it was me, Luke, Tim, and Tim's girlfriend. We were going to... Um, the second house that Tim was buying and Tim was complaining about it. He's like, why is she still at my house? Like what's going on? If you guys like my content and want to support more videos like these, you guys can go to my Patreon. 